I'm Bruce Richman. I'm from Prevention Access Campaigns. Undetectable equals untransmittable. U equals U is a campaign that was started by HIV activists, researchers, and community organizations to communicate the groundbreaking but largely unknown fact that people living with HIV who are on effective treatment, meaning they're undetectable or virally suppressed, cannot transmit HIV through sex. So that's the, the campaign aspect of it, and it's also the, the phrase um, that's being used in, in many places around the world in many different languages to convey the science that someone who is undetectable and on treatment um, cannot transmit HIV through sex. The campaign was started because the breakthrough science of U equals U wasn't breaking through to the people and the field that it was intended to benefit. When I was uh, diagnosed with HIV in 2003, I was, uh, I was depressed and isolated myself and felt like a uh, walking contagion and, and uh, was afraid of passing on the virus to someone that I loved, so I, I didn't love. Um, uh, for, for 10 years really and then in 2012 I learned that I couldn't transmit HIV because I was undetectable and that changed everything for me but I realized that millions of people weren't being told this and um, in 2012 it was known within the medical established in certain certain communities but there just hadn't been a sort of a leading voice to get this information out on a, uh, on a large scale. So, so we got together with the researchers from the main studies, the large studies, HPTN, Partner, Opposites Attract, and the Swiss Statement, and created a consensus statement on the body of research, um, not just the clinical research, but also the empirical research. And we used that consensus statement to, to get influencers on board to endorse the science that this is indeed true. And our goal was to get more and more and more influencers on board, eventually get the CDC, the US CDC, and UNAIDS and WHO, so it would really change the definition of what it means to live with HIV. It changes everything for people living with HIV. I mean, 20 years ago, we, we knew treatment would save our lives. So we've known that for a long time. And now we know treatment means we can't pass on the virus sexually to people that we want to have sex with, people that we love, people we want to have babies with. So it lifts the, the fear and shame of, of transmission of HIV. And for so many people, someone just recently, even half an hour ago, came up to me, U equals U changed my life. You know, from all backgrounds, we have people from every key affected population talking to us about how U equals U has changed their lives. They're, ha they're now in relationships where they feel they can actually have intimacy without fear anymore. Um, so just on that level, it, it's enough. It changes everything for us. But then on the other level, which is really important and is sometimes difficult to get across to people, is that this is the strongest argument that we've had for access to treatment on a global scale. This is a public health argument. Now we know that treatment stops transmission. It will stop transmission, it will get us closer to ending the epidemic. And we, we've known for a while that treatment as prevention, it reduces the risk of transmission, but now we know it is an effective prevention tool. So when we go and we're arguing for uh, access to treatment or viral load testing, now we can say, we need access to save our lives and we need access to prevent new transmissions and get us closer to the ending the epidemic. Because sometimes, unfortunately, we've seen in the field that our lives don't matter, that the lives of people living with HIV are not valued as much as people who are um, HIV negative. And now we, we have two, two approaches to, uh, to, to getting people the access they need. What we thought would tip the scales was the, the final results of, uh, of two studies, HPTN 052 and PARTNER. 
uh, that was in the summer of 2016. And we, the consensus statement was ready to go and we thought that folks would sign on quickly. <laughs> they would be ready to sign on and say, the study, we have the final results, uh, this is true, a lot of us have known for a long time. But they didn't, um, and we had uh, very aggressive, very hostile resistance at times. But New York City signed on first. New York City Department of Health and the, uh, the, the um, scientist, the researcher, and, and doctor who oversaw, oversaw that signed on. So that sort of ignited the movement. Um, the tipping point on an international scale was when Katie signed on to the campaign in early January of 2000 get choked up 2017 uh, we had you have to understand at this time we had been fighting and had been met with very aggressive resistance uh, from groups not just aid service organizations but also from the our own positive community and having an internationally recognized research organization make such a clear and compelling statement and human statement as well and, and a call to action to other organizations to say you equals you was so powerful to us um, and it, it, it definitely was a defining moment in the campaign and, and really in the history of the epidemic because it started to, we really started to see the change in the way people were describing the risk from people with HIV and then IAS signed on and ICASO, we had AIDS MAP and, um, and uh, Desmond Tutu HIV Foundation. So it just started to, to, to snowball and it, that, was, that was a exciting but still very difficult time. It was, but we needed Katie, we needed, Katie was a leader. The campaign has been embraced all over the world or the the science and the messaging um, all over the world so we have over 500 partners have signed on to the campaign and it's in 67 countries and already been translated into 15 languages with the consensus statement has been translated into 15 languages that we know of and the kinds of organizations that are signing on are, are run by people living with HIV and allies and, and reaching every key affected population. So we have this communities of people living with HIV all over the world from Vietnam to Portugal to Venezuela to Armenia, Denmark, um, Mississippi and the United States. So these many, many networks of people with HIV moving this information forward. We have the International Treatment Preparedness Coalition using the information U equals U in their access, their advocacy work for treatment access and viral load testing. Um, the uh, International Coalition for the Rights of Sex Workers in Europe um, has signed on. We have the, the Black AIDS Institute, Latino Commission on AIDS. So we're affecting um, MSMGS have signed on. We're Hornet, uh, Grinder have signed on. So we're affecting every key uh, population with this message. And what's beautiful is it's this community. You know, none of the, the, these these groups are signing on because they feel the message is important and they want to be a part of something. You know, they feel that they're a part of this this movement and they're using the hashtag hashtag U equals U and it's uh, it's absolutely a, a beautiful thing to see the commitment. To, 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 to people with HIV, a real commitment to ending HIV stigma. Uh, there's still some groups that haven't signed on yet, and there's room for them still, and some that are still fighting us, even now, after the CDC has signed on, but um, uh, they'll, they'll eventually come around, and there's still, there's still room for, for, for everyone. One thing that's really important is to be absolutely clear in messaging. Don't open up a window of risk. So words like nearly impossible, um, greatly reduces the risk, um, almost impossible, even virtually impossible, people see these as, as still a risk. Um, with almost impossible, what you'll hear is from someone who wants to harm someone with HIV or stigmatize someone with HIV or even our, ourselves, um, um, Wor being worried about risk will say almost impossible means still possible. Um, greatly reduced risk means there's still a risk. 
Virtually impossible means not really impossible. Virtual reality, especially, is what young people think. So we've we've really encouraging people to be definite. Cannot transmit. Do not transmit. Um, uh, no longer capable of transmitting. Um, effectively, no risk is what the CDC says. It's consistent with U equals U. Uh, so so to be clear, and if you're going to use negligible, which is accurate and from a scientific perspective, make sure you always define it as meaning insignificant. Don't worry about it. The main thing is to convey messages that don't induce fear. You, we want to convey messages that inspire confidence, that if someone is, is on treatment and they're, they're undetectable and they continue to take their medicine and every day as prescribed, they're not going to transmit HIV. So that's the basis. And then you want to also encourage them to stay in care. One thing that's important when you're encouraging people to stay in care and to get their, their viral load tested um, on a regular basis, whether it's every six months or three to six months, don't say you're only as good as your last viral load test. Because we don't want people to think that in between viral load tests that their, their viral load is going to increase to infectious levels for no reason at all, because it doesn't do that. If you're adherent and you take your medicine every day, you're not going to become infectious for no reason. If you, if you stay adherent, you'll stay undetectable. Um, and I, I, I think it's still, we still need to encourage people to stay in care. It's really important. Of course, you need to, to continue to get monitored, but you shouldn't be living in fear of transmission um, anymore. I think it's also important to point out that when you talk about people um, who are undetectable being able to have sex without fear. People who are detectable could also have sex without fear. So anyone who has a, a detectable viral load or anyone living with HIV, regardless of viral load, can have happy and healthy and hot, safer sex. So there's there's condoms, there's still condoms, which is sort of the, the, the old, uh, not the old, there's still condoms. Um, and in some places of the world, there's PrEP. So no one living with HIV is a danger. We, we all can have happy, healthy, hot sex that we want.